Kesselberg, um, John and Anna Kesselberg. John Kesselberg was a poet and Anna Kesselberg was a painter. And they lived uh, next door to Charles Brash, who's a well-known poet. Um, and um, Brash lived in the house next door to the Kesselberg house where I'm living. And um, the Kesselbergs, um, after they died, the trust bought the house and set up um, a residency, which is open to all um, art forms. Creative Connections Residency. I don't really know much about John and Anna Kesselberg except that John used to wear tea, tea cozies. It was quite a little bit eccentric. So when they have their AGM, which I attended a couple of weeks ago, they all wear tea cozies in honour of um, John Kesselberg. It's quite a nice little eccentricity. Primarily, it's it's just good to get away from the usual pressures and expectations of civilization a bit um, and to have somewhere which is peaceful and quiet and um, obviously you know the, the, um, the surroundings are absolutely gorgeous and it's you know it's kind of it's inspiring it's um, sometimes it's a bit hard to work in the cold but yeah, it's certainly been, it, it's a, uh, you know, it sort of clears, clears your head a bit um, as you get out, get out of the city and just driving along this road sort of gives you half an hour to think about whatever, um, sort of, you don't feel like you're in the thick of it, um, which is good for a little while, I think three months is a good amount of time to be um, well, I started with um, the piece that I was um, writing currently, um, and I've paired that with the Watson solo sonata. I thought uh, both being solo viola works could sort of book in the program. Um, and then I had um, also a, a large sequence of poems that I was writing um, based on some Watson sketches, so I thought that would go well um, sort of to break up the music. Um, and then I thought it would be nice to have some duets, because Emma and I can play together and um, we often do play together so um, the cousins and the Tremaine um, seemed like um, interesting pieces to, to do uh, to kind of give the program a bit more variety in terms of um, instrumentation. Solo viola can be a bit heavy going if you have a, a whole program of it. Um, and then Alex um, had recently learnt the Jack Body um, Alien Harp and it seemed like a a good a good moment to program that um, and I just did some songs as well just to kind of show off I suppose you know I mean it's all about me so might as well piece on the program is the Watson uh, solo sonata which Alex performed um, written in 1969 and I actually got the score for Alex as a Christmas present maybe five or six years ago um, and he's performed it a number, number of times um, since then and we were lucky to have um, Cynthia Greensill, um, Tony Watson's widow, and also his first wife, Helen Watson, and his cousin in the audience. So it was um, a big Watson presence at the concert, which was great. Um, the Watson is a very um, intense work, um, and it's, it's a work that I'm really um, excited.
excited by. It was written as a, a protest against the Vietnam War. Um, Watson was uh, strongly left-wing, I guess, communist, um, and he, yeah, uh, many a number of his pieces had had messages of protest or pacifism. Um, he wrote another piece uh, using text by um, Latin American left-wing um, sort of revolutionary writers. Um, called In Memoriam 29 October and that's a piece that I think has only had one performance but um, I would like to program it for four trumpets, eight cellos, two percussionists and a narrator and um, quite a powerful piece. Yeah. So he had, he had strong ideas about I guess the role of music in um, bringing issues to public consciousness. As succinct a portrait as this, pulling down that most striving of creatures with two hands, forcing him under, the notes too are laboured, wrung out in careful matrices, inverted, transposed and retrograded, in preparation for heavy work, for heaving upward, in preparation as bricks, carefully sanded down at every possible angle. Not simply to labour, but to make labour, to cause to labour, to bring about the perfect conditions for struggle. There is no room here for facility, only grafting, manufacture, heavy marks on the parchment, repeated downward strokes across the strings, repeated hammer blows. Part of the project that I've been working on down here at, at, um, at Broad Bay has been um, research into Watson's um, manuscripts at the Hocken collection and the most exciting uh, find for me was the um, unfinished cello concerto that he was working on when he died and um, I've used it's a it's it's a very kind of uh, rigorously worked out um, highly structured piece even though it's not a complete piece lots of bits and there's lots of instructions about how it will be was to be put together um, and so I've used these annotations uh, in this in the sketches um, as titles for a sequence of 12 poems I thought 12 was a good number because Watson's sort of language is, is 12 tone most of the time um, and pages and pages of tone rows and um, inversions and permutations and all sorts of things so um, very vivid instructions like um, so it was cello concerto um, make the cello labor to or struggle to keep his head above um, and uh, more and more brilliant things like that um, and so these seemed like really uh, quite poignant um, given that he um, was writing this at the time of his death and so I, I used those as a kind of um, starting point into a poetic sequence, I guess, about the compositional process, the, the artistic process of um, mark making, of um, saying something. This portrait creatures, hands, him, notes, matrices, preparation, work, heaving, preparation, bricks, angle, conditions, struggle, there, room, Facility, grafting, manufacture, marks, parchment, strokes, strings, hammer, blows. Because there was such a, a strong sense of his process, of his very rigorous worked out process, um, and the sort of this almost Beethovenian struggle to, um, to craft something architecturally. Um, he was very much a... A methodical systematic um, workman composer and um, yeah I've tried to kind of capture some of that um, in, in my poetry which is not always directly relevant to his music necessarily but it's it's a kind of um, fantasia I guess on 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 his his mark making and, and particularly on his actual his actual writing um, which varies from this very kind of loopy um, 
sort of swimmy cursive and it through to a, an extremely um, block capital kind of almost childlike um, quite angry um, script um, so there's these sort of two sides to his personality that come through in his in his writing which I think is quite interesting collection um, there are a number of Watson pieces that haven't been uh, put into the sounds library and some that possibly haven't been performed either um, and one that was new to me and also new to um, Cynthia Grenzel was um, a little fragment which uh, appeared to be for two violins um, two triple clef staves um, and open strings that looked like uh, violin music um, and it was a, basically a complete duet, a complete page of music, about one and a half minutes of music um, and it looked like a sort of similar idiom to the Bartok duets, the 44 Bartok duets which are kind of standard fare for violinists um, and at the top of the page in big block capitals it says this is not Bartok it's not me either, and I thought that was really uh, a, a bit of an insight into his kind of relationship with Bartok, and, and I guess that, that was almost a moment of him channeling the spirit of Bartok um, and feeling like he wasn't actually writing his own music, but um, he was writing something new, but it wasn't yet his own voice, perhaps. So I think you can hear him in it, but also Bartok. But whether whether he would want that to be one of his works or not, it was just an interesting little little sketch. There's also an arrangement of Bartok's concerto for orchestra in the in the the, the sketches. Um, although whether it's it's sort of in short score and whether it's an actual arrangement or whether it's just his kind of picking out of particular interesting parts in the orchestration. I'm not sure, but he certainly studied it and, um, you know, wrote out the whole score basically by hand. There's also sketches for a um, ballet based on Kafka's The Trial and um, a couple of other sketches of unfinished works, which are nothing like the cello concerto, no nothing as substantial as that, but um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's interesting to see the type of type of works that he w could have possibly written had he um, lived a little bit longer. Yeah. Tremaine is nine studies, so they're very, I don't want to say academic, but they are quite heavy going, um, contrapuntal, um, often canonic, um, variations on a, on a 12 tone theme, um, and we didn't perform the whole piece, it's quite, a, it's quite a lengthy, it'll probably be about 20 minutes if we did the whole thing, um, we did six out of nine movements. And it's, I think Tremaine is possibly the closest of, of earlier generations of composers to what Watson was doing um, in terms of the, the harmonic language that he used and also the interest in counterpoint. And um, it's, it's possibly not as maybe is um, kind of directly visceral as, as Watson is, but um, certainly it seemed like a, they seem to have a, a, a sort of connection for which you, you couldn't say about Lilburn's music or um, Jenny McLeod's music or 
genre of his music. I don't know. Um, it, yeah, that they seem like possibly um, they were they were working out some similar similar things, and uh, sort of um, looking towards Europe for um, you know what was what was happening at the time. And um, but these are from 1959, so you know it was at the time at the height of the the European avant-garde and um, yeah they're, they're not pushing if they were in Europe they wouldn't be pushing any boundaries but in terms of New Zealand's practice at that time I think they're pretty they're pretty forward-looking pieces um, and and they're they're really um, really good to play and really um, I think quite quite meaty quite meaty, meaty repertoire Jack Body's Aeolian Harp was the next piece on the program, and um, this was written in the 1970s, but um, the viola version is from much later. It's originally for solo violin, but has been transcribed for uh, cello and for viola. Um, and the viola version is really uh, beautiful, I think. I mean, all the, all the versions are, are, are beautiful and Alex particularly played it played it really nicely and the the harmonics in the, in the acoustic of Murrah Mahal um, really kind of popped out and you sort of felt like there was some kind of spiritual presence there um, and I think it was yeah it was really nice to have have a work of Jack's on the program it, it seems particularly kind of suited to to Jack's aesthetic, that sort of um, bright, light, um, airy, um, kind of um, Libran um, aesthetic. a couple of songs um, which I decided to, to do rather than um, original songs I decided to do some settings I'd done of um, Ian Sharp who's a Auckland poet and again it's the, the texts are from the 70s um, no 70s 80s 1985 Piero Variations um, which is a lovely little collection very kind of irreverent and slightly zany a um, little bit in the in the mold of some of the lighter beat poets Bill and Getty which I'm also very fond of um, so Ian gave me permission to set some of his poems and I, I um, sang two of them at the concert one was The Desperados and the other is Watching the Motorway by Moonlight and I've just sort of treated them very simply kind of uh, this sort of jazz inflected kind of recitative um, some interesting chords I mean I'm not much of a piano player so it's just a just a little kind of something to give the vocals a, a, a bed to, to sit on um, and there's some beautiful images in the, in the poems um, one of, at the end of the second one um, the line is look love at the white moths an angel's wing is molting I think that was yeah there's some, there's some really beautiful um, another one is uh, we chuck pebbles at the, at the night sky 
cracks appear in the moon. So yeah, it's just some sort of wistful little um, images that seemed like a good um, counterpoint to the very um, rigorous, heavy going stuff of, of Watson and, and the stuff inspired by Watson. before he gave up on instrumental music and um, devoted himself entirely to uh, electronic and installation works and um, sonic arts. Um, but I think it's, yeah, it's a very well-crafted little um, triptych and um, they, were, they were a lot of fun to play those. Yeah. It's quite, tri quite tricky, the, the movement's quite tricky. work on the program was the the new work that is the the main product of my residency here um, it's called an autumn cutting and the title comes from the fact well it's, it's kind of obvious really but it comes from the fact that I've taken um, a fragment of, of Watson's music um, from the third string quartet um, and sort of grown it and germinated it into a, a longer form um, piece. The, 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 the fragment that I've taken is from the, the central part of the third quartet which is very kind of introspective and um, very tonal, um, very lyrical uh, and really quite a different world to 90% of the rest of the piece and much of his other music um, there's this moment uh, yeah about two thirds three quarters of the way through the piece where builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and then it lands on a C major chord and there's a 30 seconds 40 seconds of music where it just sort of gets trapped in this little chromatic sequence based around C major and C sharp minor and um, it's really powerful because of um, the, because it's so tonally different from the rest of the work and because there's so much tension building up to it and then it just gets all kind of released into this um, into this section so at the same time it also it gets stuck and it, it kind of can't move forward it's, it's kind of a cycle that gets stuck on loop and eventually has to kind of go back to the, the other language of, of struggle and you know whatever else he was working out.
Um, so I, I thought that it that it maybe needed a life outside of that piece. That, that it felt like it was it was wanting to to grow into something else. And maybe that's a bit self indulgent, but um, it seemed like good material for a for a solo piece. Um, and so I, I yeah I took this little um, it's really a two bar two bar phrase of four chords that, that repeats and, and, and that was the starting point of the piece. It's a, quite a long piece, probably, I thought it was about 15 minutes, probably about 18 minutes in, in performance. Um, and it's, it's basically one movement, but it's three, I mean, it's three movements, but it's, it's not, um, everything's related and it's, it's really a single stretch. Um, and the second, the central section is um, a, a homage to the, the Watson, Viola Sonata Skirta, which is just this moto perpetuo, it just just keeps going and going, and this the Watson is is just non-stop fortissimo with accents. Um, so my movement is a is a is a kind of um, dialogue with that, um, and there are a number of other little nods to Watson. Um, some of his kind of um, chromatic um, contrary motion to unison and things like that. A um, couple of references to the sonata in the third quartet. Um, but basically it, it, it starts with that kind of that unexpected tonal chromatic language and sort of lets it open out into um, a language based on harmonic series and introduces um, harmonic notes, well, um, seventh and ninth and eleventh and thirteenth harmonics, and so you start to get quarter-tones and, and microtonal tunings, and, um, and eventually it, it starts to kind of just become this almost vertical um, language, the, the line sort of dissipates and there's this big long tail at the end of the piece and you're, yeah, you're sort of just left with a, a big sort of resonance of the C and G strings and some sort of ethereal harmonics. Um, so that seems, yeah, that was, in the end, that was the natural end point of, of, of that material. sound and she's um, incredibly um, composed her performance is so um, controlled and but at the same time very expressive and very um, emotionally sensitive I think and, and that work really really needed that so I was really happy <laughs> 